<laughs> Hello, my friends. Do you often sing or whistle just for fun? So we're going to do a mid-afternoon unboxing because it's been a long time since I've been waiting on these books. Some for years. Some for years. Some for just a couple of weeks. So what are you going to do? You know, what are you going to do? You're going to box them live so you can get them out of the boxes so I can show them to you so I can get them on the shelves and I can go about the rest of my day and eat some delicious tacos that producer Jill made. She made some delicious tacos. Hello, David Mulligan. Hello, my new friend on Facebook. My brand new friend. He he had to see uh, Here's to the Further um, video that I made way back in the day. And I made it. You know, when I didn't have any standards, like now. Um, but yes, thanks for joining me, David. How's it going? So we're going to jump into it. The first thing I got is The Long Walk. Now, this was shipped like two weeks ago. And I didn't want to open this box without filming it. Because this is a sort of situation where... Uh, this is a situation where you want evidence of how this isn't your fault. This is not your fault. Look at this box. This this was shipped two weeks ago. It got lost in Atlanta. It sat in Atlanta for like, I don't know how long. And a week later, this one was shipped. This is the signed long walk. And they showed up a day apart. So this one stayed in Atlanta. I think it was part of the riots. I don't know. I don't know what it did. But there's like a bullet hole there. And then uh, somebody used it as a pillow. Look at that. Smashed. So, you know. Oh, Kyle. Kyle, thank you. They see that caught my eye. Now I know why they do that. Thank you. That is very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just spent hours watching your Fricasi interviews, loving your content and your humor. Man, keep it up. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Very generous and kind. Um, Flash, I'm having a journey into the night rapture right now. Wow, it's the that's good. That's good. Journey into the night. I'm having a lemonade, so cheers. Cheers. So here we go. We're just gonna get into this. We're gonna see. This is the unsigned long walk. Unsigned $95 one or whatever it is whatever it was. And yes, like, I mean, there's a lot of box around the book. There's not a whole lot. There's a lot of space. So there's, I'm not a whole lot of fear that there's anything wrong with the book, but it's always possible. Oh, we're going to cut this tape. So that's, it's a down and dirty unboxing. So here we are. Cinepe Press. Book all the way at the bottom. Book at the bottom. Undo this. Un oh. Oh, it's like a whole wedding train. All right. So now, upon first look, the book looks a little. I don't know, a little little slanty, but that could just be my fear. Fear materializes perception. You know what I mean. Hiya, Jeff. Best book of 2022 and 2023 so far? <laughs> well, what did I read in 2023 so far? What did I read so far in 2023? I only read two. Oh, yes, yes. Um, The Painted Bird, man. 2020 no no you know what yes painted bird so far but i did read a philip fricassi that's better than 11 22 63 sorry stephen king so here is the signed unsigned version there were 1400 of these produced this looks good i think i'm just i'm just paranoid you know it came with this famous fantastic mysteries burn which burn it's like a sticker or something what is that it's very cool i think this is something that 
was put into slip cases. This feels like it's like an inset insert into the slip cases. That's what I think. And Alan, I did a uh, video of my favorite reads of 2022. So you could see what I thought of 2022. But so far in 2023, Painted Bird, I don't, that just struck a chord with me, you know? And we and we have I have Chad Lutsky to thank. Hey Jeff, the long walk is one of my favorites. Yeah, it's been a minute since I read this. I read this when it was uh, I think in 87 was the first time I read this book. I got the Bachman books. I read Rage, The Long Walk, and The Running Man, but I didn't read Roadwork. I've not yet read Roadwork. All right, so the unsigned one. It's wrapped in mylar. Boom. And here it is. There's the dust jacket. You know what? I'll do it. I'll do it one better. I'll show the dust jacket like this. So there you have it with... Uh... Oh, It's hard to see. You know what? Let's look at the reverse. Because the reverse is the dust jacket without any words on it. And you could see it, even though uh, there's a little bit of mylar at the bottom. But beautiful dust jacket art. Love it. And then the naked book. Now, I've seen pictures of the naked book around. And I'm digging it. Top edge stain. And uh, the end papers are also like the the book well this was random yes it was random potato yes it was i read the long walk back when it came out as a uk paperback 80 or 81 okay. igor's picks were fantastic yeah that's why you can't really compete you know that's the thing i'm losing out on doing when i do these live unboxings i don't do the photos at the end but i could show you if you have questions and things you want to see i could show them to you also, I can't compete with some of those photography out there from Igor. No way. No way in hell. So there it is. Huff the book. Look at that. So introductions by Bev Vincent, illustrated by Jim and Ruth Keegan, photography by Patrick Lair, published by Centipede Press. So this would be, I think, an example of photography. Um you know, I've seen some people talking about how this uh, top edge stain sticks a little bit. That's a really an issue, but that's something I've noticed on other Centipede Press titles. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not giving you a good look. So the top edge stain. But it can it's undone very easily and gently. So it's not it's not a big deal, you know. And. I've, I've noticed that on other books with top edge stains, you know, it's just, you got to be careful. You got to be mindful. You don't want it to stick together. And now that I keep looking at the book, I'm more and more reassured that it wasn't slanted. When I first took it out and I saw it in the wrap, I'm like, this is all slanty. Like it's, but it's not, it's beautiful. This is a beautiful book. Now this costs $95. Um, it is again, the unsigned one. So there are no signatures in the back. Um, very cool. Um, color art on a uh, color photos and art on there. <clears throat> As I flip through, it's loaded um, with uh, some details. See that? See how it, I'm like getting down, getting down out of the way. I don't want to get shot. So that is that is that. Who who else is saying what? Who else is what saying who what? I love the art in this edition. Yeah. And putting the chapter numbers in the road signs is a great idea. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Thank See, that's why I like the live, man. Um, it's all sort of. You know, there, there's great art. And, you know, I haven't read this in so long that I'm going to read it in this. I never would have imagined as a child, as a wee lad, I think a 15 year old that someday I would hold a Centipede Press edition because Centipede Press didn't exist in my brain. I don't even think it existed in, in the world. The Long Walk is my favorite 
SK story. Stephen King's story looks awesome. So, yes, keep in mind the unsigned edition, no slipcase, and, and all those features. It has a ribbon page marker, top edge stain, art throughout, mylar dust jacket. You saw the boards. You saw the naked, naked boards. Keep that all in your mind. You got to store it up there. Oh, Jeff, I didn't... Okay, Jeff said that. Jeff said The Long Walk is my favorite Stephen King story. Really? I you know, I haven't seen you or talked to you in a while. I didn't realize uh, Stephen King was your jam in any capacity. You struck me as more of a sci-fi cat. Part numbers, not chapter numbers. Okay. Kyle Davis, I'd say, yeah, they're worth it. Okay. What are you guys' thoughts on that King signed anthologies? Quietly now, postscripts. Yay or nay, I can get postscripts for $2.95. Should I just do it for the King Sig at the cheap? Yeah, I would. I mean, you know, I love those anthologies where you get all those authors signing. It's cool. It's like the best of the best. And uh, especially if there's a King sprinkled in there, it's pretty sweet. Um, but normally I don't hunt anything down. Once it's up there in the secondary, so I let it be. I let it, you know, marinate, let it stew. You know, I'd say, yeah, worth it. Before you end the stream, you got to give the viewers some butt crack. Okay, so I looked at the tape. I looked at the tape. There was, there was, that was all, that was fake news. That was fake news. And there was no butt crack. I looked at it. I, even if, I mean, if you have, a measuring tape and you could you could focus in you see there's nothing there nothing there okay um not very deep in his work but remember reading that in eighth grade just loved it yeah yeah it was awesome all right so now this is the signed one the signed one oh oh what did i do with dragon lord oh yeah as in yes yay or nay which everybody gets wrong yay uh, I could be blind though. I might have said yes. Um, I don't remember. We'll have to play the tape back. So many controversies. So this one was shipped like a week later, and it arrived a day later. While wow, that long walk took the long walk, and was getting roughed up in Atlanta. So you sound like a politician. There was nothing there. There's no there there. There was no, it was back. Might have been back fat, but it wasn't butt fat. All right. So here we go with this one. This is, oh, this is like a quilty blanket. It's taped. It's taped. Hold, please. Okay. So there were talks of chapbooks with this. I don't know. I don't know what comes with it. This came with it. All right. So this is what did what did Beef Daddy get? Beef Daddy got another fantastic burn witch burn thing. And then <laughs> Jared always puts bonus items in. These are wild. I don't know what they are. I don't know what they are. But um Elric art? I, I can't tell what this art is. I can look it up. I will look it up. And uh, I will make sure that I have these in a safe place. They were wrapped around a book. Obviously, they don't need to be cherished because they were they were wrapped up there. But anyway, here is the signed one. I don't know what number I got. Oh, I got number 330. 330. Oh, there, there I am holding the book, and there I am holding the book, and there I am holding the book. So here is the long walk slipcase edition signed by uh not King, and I do owe you all an apology for that. Much, much apologies. I hope you can accept my apologies because that hype I caused that I kicked up. I'm sorry. And if you don't know what the hype was, then maybe I shouldn't remind you. But I did say that, what if it's signed by King? It was just a what if. It was just a what if. 
So this is a very nice, uh, very standard for Centipede Press slipcase, cloth bound. Um, the Long Walk. There it is. Um, the book is in there. That's what slipcases do. And then, okay, so this is the rumored chat book. This is cool. And it was in every book. This is cool. So it's a centipede press. And it's so it's like it's like a press release or a media supporting the release of the book with the covers, the long walk. I don't remember what was in the Bachman books. I think it was this one. And um, that's a nice addition, man. That's nice to add that. And then there's the end sheets and a thank you. So that was in the slip case in the shrink wrap. So I'm assuming everybody gets one of these. Very cool. Nice. F Firma? F Firma? I don't know what they call that. When you get the sig page, Jeff, show the Keegan signature, please. Okay, I will. So, again, this is indistinguishable from the unsigned. <laughs> you can't judge the signature by the cover. So, this is the signed one. I guarantee the books are identical. Um, only 500 of these exist with the signature sheet tipped in because uh, if you don't know what Centipede Press did was print probably like 2,000 of these and 500 signature sheets floated around and then they get tipped in to the back of the book. They get glued in. And here is... And it's wild how Centipede Press does this. They don't hand write the numbers in. They they actually have it printed on the page. So I don't know what happens if they need to replace a copy with a with the same number, like if something gets damaged and they have to send a new one. But um, here is the signature page. Jim and Ruth. That's the Jim and Ruth signature that Flash wanted to see. Jim's Ruth. Oh. <laughs> no, yeah, it does look like Jim. Okay. My copy says Jim's Ruth. I think what you have is a flubbed ampersand, Phil. That's that's definitely supposed to be an ampersand. Jim and Ruth with an exclamation point um there. So that and that's another that's a cool piece of art I didn't get to show you on the other one. So some people were complaining about the end sheets and how they don't line up and they thought it was a defect, but that's just not the case. It's a piece of paper, man. And and then when you put it in, it's it's going to get glued in a way that, that kind of distorts the picture a little bit. So <clears throat> that is simply the way it shakes out. And I, I know I said it was like loaded with art and it is, and I'm not really getting to, you to see it all that well, but um, it's cool, man. It's cool. I'm going to have an exquisite reread of this book. Chapter nine. So, um, David Mulligan said the sections had the street signs. Look at that. Now, King wrote this when he was just in college. He was a college boy. A little college boy. Um, there's a big piece of art right here. Look at that. Very cool, man. My favorite Bachman book. Hey, Vincent, good to see you. Good to see you. So that is how it looks. And I will say that um, it did remind me of Inspection by Josh Mallerman. Uh, if you guys are watching, pay close attention. I'm about to turn around and retrieve a book. That is when most of the butt crack happens. So we'll just grab this. Look at that. I didn't even need to leave the chair. So 
This was inspection where the where the boys, the alphabet boys, are all lined up for their morning inspection, and you get that solitary figure on the spine, which ties in really well with the story. And there they all are, and of course, it forces the comparison. The long walk. They're walking. What if they crash into each other? Maybe that's what's going to happen. So, and then you get the spines. It's very cool. Two different, completely different books. Two different authors, two different humans. Um, and, oh, that was pins and needles. I got to say, I was terrified. Jared sends his stuff media mail. <laughs> you don't have the option. You can't opt for priority or UPS or anything. It's always media mail. At least I don't think you can. I don't think I ever, I've ever selected the postage from Centipede Press. It is the way he sends it. And man, when that one got hung up in, um, in, when that one got hung up in Atlanta, I thought I'm not getting it. This actually was delayed by a day. I was supposed to do this live yesterday to share with you. Um, <clears throat> my copy of the signed one and this got hung up in Atlanta, but only for a day, not a week. And I'm like with media mail, it's a crap shoot. You don't know how it's going to shake out. And it's just pins and needles. And, and these books, especially with a cat doing a buying freeze, your, your, your books that are in and route are, um, they, they, the stakes are much higher. Hear about the cows that wandered into the cannabis field? The stakes are high. The stakes are high. So <clears throat> I didn't buy inspection, but it was a good read. Nice production. It was. It was great. I, it's like I love that book. Uh, the ending's wild, man. I just kept hearing Alice Cooper singing Schools Out in my head. That's not a spoiler if you don't want it to be. It can be if you let it. Mm. All right. So dad jokes. Got them. I got them. I got, oh, look at that poison ivy. I just got to document it. Poison ivy hugs. Free. Free poison ivy hugs. If you want to get out of work or something, you know, I just rub a little bit of this magic on you. Magic skin. And it's like you could hear it. It's like, shh, shh, shh. it's like a rasp. Little magic skin gets you out of work every time. Works every time. All right. So lastly is a book I bought five years ago. Not a joke. Not a joke. Come on, man. Not a joke. I bought this five years ago. And um, from Dark Regions Press. And I really did not think it was ever going to see the light of day. I never thought in a million years this book I, I seriously, well, obviously I didn't think that because I didn't cancel my order, but I was very close to canceling my order. And I'm like, no, no, I really want Offspring by, by Jack Ketchum. I think it's going to happen. Um, Mallory as well is going to happen. It has to happen. But I didn't get The Cabin at the End of the World. I didn't get Spin a Black Yarn. So you could see where the, the confidence falls off a cliff. But I had these ordered, and I'm like, I'm not going to cancel them. They're going to show up. They're going to show up. Past Jeff wants to send future Jeff these gifts, these little treats. And who am I to deny a gift from past Jeff? Who? Who am I? <laughs> Tell you, not one to turn down a Jack Ketchum book. I actually got this as a part of a deal. Chris Morey reached out to me and said, hey, look, I'm going to do a Kickstarter for Offspring. You got off season. If you buy the lettered, I'll throw in a numbered for free for you. And because at the time I wasn't pulling the trigger, I was already kind of skeptical. But he kept saying, hey, look, I'll just throw in a free numbered if you buy it. In fact, the prices are about to go up. So I'll keep you at the lower price and I'll throw in a free book. And then I did. That's when I went. So this is actually a free book to me from Dark Regions from a now deceased author. This is the very first Jack Ketchum book I ever read. And I loved it. This book, oh, if you've never read Off Season, let me rub some poison ivy on you. 
you take a few days off of work and, and you sit down and read it. And then you'll have chills from the Poison Ivy, yes, but also from the book. The book. Oh, this book. Oh, my goodness. Can I make that noise anymore? I can. I can. It's within my... So this, this is like uh, bubble wrap. Bubble wrap to death. I mean, the woman can't breathe in this. The woman is a character in the book. Have you read it? I read this, then I read Off Season, and I think this book is better than uh, the first one, Offspring. Just nasty. The first book kind of walks the line about what's savage and what's civil civilized, right? Civilization versus savagery. And uh, it kind of hints at it, but it goes more for the horror and the shock and the terror of, of humans being hunted. I mean, it's been a long time since humans were hunted and not top of the food chain. So for humans to hunt other humans, it's stark. So um, the first book kind of just goes for the horror. This makes the point chillingly clear of, of what Jack Ketchum, the subtext of the story. Um, uh, no, thanks. Got poison ivy in my yard years ago. Nasty. It is nasty. No, it is not signed by Jack Ketchum. Jack Ketchum passed away before that could happen. I think the book was in production, but it, it didn't make it. But there is a facsimile signature from Jack Ketchum. Dallas Marr is his real name. But um, facsimile in silver foil on... The cover, the lettered edition, which is what I bought, has it in gold. And um, art by Tomislav Tukulin. And um, and who else? Who else did art in here? I can't recall. Oh, you know what? I have it up. I have it up on my old screen here. So, <clears throat> um. Who did the art? See, now I'm all over the place. Oh, springs. So Thomas, five new illustrations from Tomislav Tukulin and a new wraparound dust jacket by David Stup Stupakis. So Tomislav did the interiors. I believe this is an interior right here. And um, the wraparound was um, David Stupakis. So that's that's what we got there. Now, it says it's signed by James R. Beach and Mike Noble, all right? Um, so if you notice, there are three signatures there. So one's James Beach, one's Mike Noble, but who is that up there, that top signature? I believe... <laughs> That uh, let me see the con uh, the. I'm trying to see. Yeah, I think that's Thomas Monteleone. He wrote the forward, and I think he signed it. They took all mention of Thomas Monteleone off the website for the product page because of the issues he was having. Uh, you know the whole burning his entire career thing um, that he just did. So Dark Regions Press, I think they do a good job with page design, adding adding elements to the page that's evident in Bird Box. I've not read my off, my off season yet. I was waiting for this and I was going to do a whole, um, a whole reading of all my Jack Ketchums together, you know, because I can overdose on terror. This book is terrifying. So if you've if you've not read it, like I got this at the library and damn. It is, it is, it is brutal. Brutal. And I think they did a great job. This looks this looks great. I think this actually looks better than um their previous books. I think this is better than Bird Box and Off Season. Um, 
but I, I can't I can't really tell. This is this is nicer than the numbered bird box. And hopefully it means they're going to turn around. I mean, it's kind of impressive for them to actually put out a book like five years later and with like no new sales funding those. They've been selling a lot of other publishers' books. They haven't been selling a lot of theirs, but they've kept it going and now the books are here. I don't have the letter yet because they have to do the tray cases. It's a different production, but um, I'm, I'm excited. I'll probably get that a few months from now. And until then, this will obviously be my reading copy. I'm stoked for it. Um, this is not available from the publisher. These copies have sold out. I don't know how long ago, um, but they are gone. You can get it on eBay. Somebody, oh, there are only 500 numbered editions only. That's a small print run. And it's pretty modestly priced at $85. You can get this on eBay right now from Bad Moon Books for like $89. This is buy it now price. So that's that's not a bad deal. If you're a Jack Ketchum fan or you want something brutal to read, this is brutal. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, and like I said, even more so than off season. Although I might have been desensitized when I read off season, I already read this, so I had stuff to measure against. But this really puts you, oh man. Mm. So, what did you say, Vincent? Do you have the woman? He writes so beautifully, but man, the content is often gut wrenching. Yes, I don't have the woman. I. I read it and I did not like it at all. So here's how I see it. I see off season kind of floats the idea out there that um, savagery and civilization are just matters of perspective in, in some way and how people can be complacent in this idea of civilization. And when that's punctured, when somebody tears down that thin curtain, you realize that there's the world's a very, the world's got a lot of teeth and it bites. So it's sort of there, but it's not really fully formed. And then offspring is Ketchum's thesis on that. So he, he juxtaposes savages who eat human meat, but they live by a certain code. And to them, it's sacred, and it and it's it's something that they understand. It's what they operate within. It's some superstition, some religion. I mean, you can mix that in there as well. And then there are civilized people who do brutal things, who are horrible people, even though they have all the benefits of this veil of protection, this idea of civilization. So I think that offspring strikes that balance really well. The woman makes a mockery of it. It's it's sort of like, okay, if you didn't get it from off-season and then you didn't get it from offspring, you got it in a woman in a in a heavy head handed, ham-fisted caricature of a thesis where it's like, oh okay, yeah, I get it. You you're stressing the point so much that you lost the story. You lost me as a reader. And I I'm not along for the ride. It just to me the woman fell fell right on its face um he that's a book jack ketchum wrote with lucky mcgee and i i don't know why why that relation i don't know what part this other author brought to it but um i i don't care to own a copy of that book now dark regions was supposed to do excuse me is supposed to do the woman haven't heard anything about it. The only books I've recently heard about, of, of course, were Cabin at the End of the World. It was supposed to be signed by Josh Mallerman, but I don't think it is. And then they were going to do Spin a Black Yarn. But other than that, I don't know if the woman is in the queue at all. Um, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. <clears throat> so that's my unboxings for today. And uh, The Long Walks. Both versions, the slipcase. Now, I did hear a lot of people complaining. They're like, well, this book 
is identical to this book except for one page, one piece of paper, and a slipcase. But the price difference is quite a leap between the two. And the, a lot of people were feeling like, oh, had they known it was going to be that close in production value, they wouldn't have sprung for this one. They would have just stuck with this one because this isn't signed by the author. And I think a lot of people, myself included, were hoping that would be the case to get Stephen King signing either as Richard Bachman or some fun way to include Stephen King as Charnel House did with the regulators. Um, it was fun. It was a fun thing, but King wasn't necessarily involved with this production. Um, but I'm, I am happy. I got the signed edition and I am happy. I got the unsigned one because it's a centipede press book. It's a Stephen King story. And it's one I've long, I'm long overdue reading and the production value is nice. You know, you Jared and, um, he doesn't ever do a bad production, but when he really goes for it, it's something special. And I think these are um, something special. Another live late. We'll have to rewatch. That's fine. It's fine. I, I did kind of uh, make this a spontaneous thing. I did kind of, I did schedule it a half hour before I went and I'll try to do that from now on. When I do these lives in the middle of the week, I'll schedule them. I'll set the time. There'll be a little countdown. You could be there you know, pre-gaming, as it were. Maybe you put a little vodka vodka in your uh, lemonade. You know, I don't know. But um, thank you, Flash. I love doing these live unboxings. Thank you for everybody's here. Thank you again, Kyle. I'm, I'm humbled that um, that you're, you're helping to support the channel like that. It's very nice. I'm glad Jeff was here. I haven't seen Jeff or talked to him. We owe him a shirt. Jeff, you got to come to Tennessee, man. Just gotta come be on these lives. Is the Rapture Brewing a subscription-based beer distributor? No, Rapture is a brewer out of um, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and you don't need to be a subscription. You don't need a subscription. Uh, you could hit up Mitch Hall for some brews, and he will ship them to you, and then you will drink them, and then you will never want any other beer. Mitch, Mitch's stouts are top of the line for me. I have, I have one more left. One more. Ooh, so yes, hit up Mitch Hull. Uh, Phil can attest that Rapture is delicious. Um, hit up Mitch and you, and he'll hook you up. He'll hook you up. It's great stuff. So that's it for this unboxing. Um, I'm glad I got these out of the mail and onto my shelves and into your eyeballs. Um, it's always, it's always good to share these books and that's why this channel was born really. Cause I can't share the books with anybody else. <laughs> so I'm glad to be here. I'm so glad you were here. Uh, I don't have any other content scheduled this week, but I will be back at it live and I hope you will join me live Monday 8.30 p.m. Eastern, and we have much to discuss. And think about it. If, if you think about it um, and, and you want to see anything in particular on these books that I just unboxed, uh, I'll, I'll accommodate you. I just won't accommodate any butt crack requests. So calling that off. So until next time, um, have a book, have a beverage, and stay frosty.